doing pipeline stress analysis. That, that picture is from a stress analysis that we, we performed on, on January 1984 for a 60-inch pipeline for a local customer. And since then, we've been working pretty much uh, all the time with uh, pipelines and pressure vessels and pressure equipment. We've been specializing in high energy systems, so high temperature, high pressures. And currently, we are developing two softwares. One of them is pipe calculation systems that I'm, that I'm going to be showing you guys today. And the other one is Ruhu Floater, that is for quasi-static analysis of, of the, the, the rain accumulation over external floating roofs. This, this roof flo floater is under development, under development, but if you need any additional info, you can contact me and I'll be very pleased to provide it to you. Um, the development of PCS began when we started perform, to perform uh, several analyses that were very complex and with high temperatures and high pressures. And we felt that in order to provide uh, best-in-class services service to our customers, we needed a, a better tool than the one that we were using. We were using a, a standard pipe flexibility tool that is from, from a competitor that we still use today. But at that time, we felt that we needed something, something better. Um, and we look around in the market and we haven't found anything that would quite fulfill what we felt that we need. So we have decided to, to develop a solution that would solve the problem to us. Um, once the solution uh, became stable and and we felt uh, confident in using it, we decided to to release it to market, and we partnered with Vias along with other companies to to provide it to to customers. Well, why exactly do, do we need? a better solution for pipe, pipe flexibility. Uh, if you ever performed an analysis of a pipeline according to B31 codes or several other pipeline codes, you probably already encountered this, a table like this one on the right, which presents you with the flexibility factors and stress intensification factors for several geometries, standard geometries, and what are those? Well, whenever you have a change in direction with a pipe band, you have a decrease in the overall flexibility. You have a, an increase in the overall flexibility, a decrease in the stiffness of the system. And this is pretty much defined by these values on the table on the right. And also when you, you are dealing with fatigue analysis, you need to include the stress intensification factors from this table. The problem is that on that table, you have only a limited number of geometries available. And in real world applications, you tend to have geometries that are quite different than these ones. An additional problem is that you may have, for instance, pipe elbows or pipe bands very close to each other or pipe elbows close to, to flanges. And this will change your flexibility for that particular geometry. And it's very hard. The, the user needs experience to select the appropriate flexibility factors and stress intensification factors from the table. Uh, this is on real world applications, of course. And this can prove to be tricky sometimes. The history behind this is that it was developed by Marco. Uh, it was developed, it was summarized by Marco in the late 40s from several studies that were performed from the early 1900s until the late 50s. And they were summarized on tables like this one. 
and they are still in use today. The, prob the problems with that is that it's only li it's limited for standard components. It has a limited range of D over T ratios, and it was developed according to welding procedures from the 50s. It accounts for fatigue only for primary loads. And of course, it doesn't account for material nonlinearities and geometric nonlinearities in the sense of a finite element analysis that we are used to do today. These limitations are acknowledged pretty much everywhere in, in codes such as B31.3. As you can see here, there are several places where you can see that those values need to be used in the absence of more directly applicable data. And the truth is that today, with finite element software readily available to almost every company that deals with the petrochemical industry and nuclear industry and the oil and gas industries, all, all companies that works on that particular particular areas, they they can have a, a full featured finite element analysis software, and so it's very easy to get more applicable data. For instance, here we have an a simple case study that we have performed here, where we compared the results from Markle's original lab tests that were used to develop to develop the, the stress intensification factors table. And as you can see here on, on the X and circles, the, the, the X are abacus elbow 31 elements and the circles are abacus shell elements. As you can see, the results from, from a finite element analysis with today software are pretty close within within the, 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 the scatter of the lab tests that were performed more than 60 years ago. So it's a pretty reliable way to get more applicable data. Okay, this is just to illustrate that when performing lab tests, a finite element solution we will provide you an answer that is quite close to, that resemble quite closely to what you would find on the lab test. Okay, so where do we stand with PCS? We have several degrees of complexity and they, they depend on the temperature, pressure, loading history, geometries. You can have a quite simple system like the one on the left. Uh, with low temperature, low pressure, a simple loading history, a simple geometry, or you can have a very complex system like the one on the right with several temperature states, several pressure states, uh, extremely complex loading conditions, and uh, of course, a, a complex geometry. With a standard flexibility me method, you can tackle pretty much problems with low and medium complexity without any compromise to safety or compromise to the accuracy of the solution, okay? But if you need to go a little further to, into high complexity systems, you can use, of course, a standard flexibility method with a non-standard FEA tool from several vendors. And you can combine these two methods in order to, to reach to problems with a little more complexity than we saw on the previous picture. And of course, you can use a full feature finite element analysis software, like Abacus, for instance. But then the problem is that you, you find very hard to model a complex geometry or to model a complex loading history. And that's where we feel that PCS really shines because it enables you to use a full feature finite element software to solve all range of piping problems, piping structural problems. 
Okay, well, what exactly is PCS? PCS is a, an add-on module to Abacus. It runs over on top of Abacus CAE. It includes an additional model, module called Pipe with additional buttons and features. And you use that to model your pipeline, to include your pipe fittings, your pipe supports, spring hangers. You can, you can include spring hangers. You can include uh, T's. And you can have control over your meshing, the element types you're going to use, the loading conditions. So pretty much on a CAE, on, on the same CAE window that you're used to if you're used to use, using Abacus. Another additional feature that we have is that we have several internal databases for storing material data. We provide several, uh, a, a full feature database with lots of material from B31.1, B31.3, ASA ME2. Uh, PCS also provide easy pipe right routing, easy inclusion of pipe uh, fittings. Uh, it also provides you with input and output tabular reports in order for you to uh, store evidence of your, your calculations. And it's all inside, inside Abacus using standard INP files and the the result files generated are standard ODB files. So if you need to tweak your model, you can tweak it pretty much the same way you would tweak a regular Abacus model. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a little bit of PCS and how it works. First, when you open PCS, you see the, the select model units screen where you can select one of these four units here. Then what you need to do, you need to select a pipe specification and a pipe material for your model, for the pipelines that you're going to build from now on. I'm gonna choose a four inch pipe. Schedule 14 with the material data. We have several materials here. The material data that is going to be selected is B31.1. And I make this material current. You can close this window now. I select this window to create a pipe. Okay. We'll create another pipe section here. Going vertical. Minus Z. X. Of course, you have several input methods here for the coordinates and pipe lengths. Now Z. Here at the end. So this is pretty much the basic routing of our pipeline. And now I'm going to include some supports here. I'm going to include two anchors, one here, one here. Okay. Now a standard support and a guide. Okay. All right, what is missing here are the pipe bands. I'm going to use a long radius bands. I select pretty much everything. And it's going to detect automatically where, where pipe bands are needed. Okay. All right, now I'm going to create a pipe step. create a loading. I'm going to include only temperature here. Let's 
select pretty much everything. Okay, now I save my model. Okay, so at this moment, I only have a model one here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pre-process this model in order to generate my final Abacus model. I have two options here. I can create a B model or a shell model, and I can select several kinds of, of elements. Or in the case of shell, I can select some meshing properties for the shell. I'm going to start by generating a beam model. Okay. What PCS did was to generate an additional model that was pre-processed. On this model, what we have, I'm going to remove the volume here. What we have, we have several connectors that were generated in order to, to, describe, to describe the pipe supports. We have the custom, the custom section properties for the pipe bands in order to account for the reduced stiffness of the pipe bands. This is all according to ASME B31 code, this stiffness reduction on pipe bands. Okay. So this is pretty much what we get. And after that, we can come here. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to show you that. We can generate uh, the meshing. Okay, let me show you the meshing. Pretty much the same way that you would generate the mesh for a a standard abacus job. Okay. I'm going to refine the mesh, the meshing on the pipe bands. And I run again the preprocessor. And as, as you can see, the mesh was translated here to the preprocessed model. Now, we run this model. Oops. Okay, the job is here, it's running. Okay, completed. Let us check the results. All right. Now we have here the results for this geometry using beam elements. Now, if I decide that I, I'd, rather, I'd, ra I'd rather use shell elements for this model, I can so I just have to select here the shell modeling for the preprocessing, and I can select how many elements I'm going to have across the pipe section. And all longitud longitudinal meshing is going to be according to the, the mesh that were described here on your base model. So I generate the model now. Okay. And as you can see here, we have all bands with a, with a finer mesh than the rest of the model. We have all the couplings required for the connectors to work with the shell model. So this, is, this is, would be a very tedious work to do if you were to do this manually on a model. Of course, with a model, as small as this one, you could do it easily, but on models that are more complex, it would probably require you much longer to do it. Now I have just submitted this model.
just a couple more minutes, seconds here. Okay. Okay. Now we have our solution very easily. Okay, and you can have the, the pipe displacement just as we had on the beam model. Okay, of course, we created the model, but we can also edit it. We can move points. Okay, and if I wanted to run the model again, all I had to do, all I would have to do would be to, to rerun the preprocessor and rerun the analysis. Okay, so this is pretty much the, the demo that I had for the software. And getting back here to the presentation. Okay, so this is how a user would input data from inside Abaco CAE and PCS. But we have an additional option that is through a, a Python API that is provided along with PCS where you can you can generate uh, procedurally your your pipe route and it has it has currently only a couple of comments the, the main comments of PCS but we plan to expand this library on each release so for instance this code here would include a pipe feature. We would generate we would generate a pipeline from two datums that were previously previously generated by PCS API. Okay, this is just one other case study that we have here. One of several benchmarks that we performed with PCS. We compared PCS results with um, Caesar two, and for this model here, on the vast majority of the pipeline, we found pretty much the same results. For instance, on displacements and uh, restraints, restraints reactions, but for a region at the end of the pipeline where we had uh, a pipe band close to two flanges or two ridges, ridges we found that depending on the selection of the the pipe flexibility factor to be used CSR2 may, may have a result that is very different from the actual result from PCS which is closer to reality so it's very important when using standard flexibility methods to carefully select the, the pipe band flexibility. For instance, here we have a scissor tool with no flange options. You can see we have a reaction at the pipe nozzle here, at the, the, the equipment nozzle here. Uh, if we select two the two flange option, it's quite close to what we have in PCS, but it's still different. And if we select no flange options, it's very different. Okay, I'm gonna just walk through this model for you to have a, a look at what a real model would look like. Okay. So this is, this is that model there. As you can see, this would be pretty much impractical to generate manually using only Abacus CAE tools because we have a lot of connectors and a lot of couplings for each connection.
Okay, so this is a real world example where we had only one small area with a difference between a traditional method and PCS. But we also have another example here. Let me just get back to where I was it's here. Okay. So this is another example where what we did was to create the basic model using PCS and afterwards tweaking that model, that model that was generating generated using PCS, we tweaked it using standard Abaco CAE features. What we did was to include contact on every support, every pipe support of this region and friction. Uh, this pipeline is a real pipeline where, where there's a problem. Uh, this region here uh, has jogged, it moved on the X, X axis and it ended up hitting uh, a neighbor pipeline. And the user didn't know, the client did not know how that happened. And by using Abacus and PCS and all the features that are, are available to us with, with Abacus and PCS, of course, we were able to to demonstrate that the problem is that this pipeline was not sufficiently supported. It's, this pipeline is missing a couple of longi longitudinal uh, stops in order to prevent it to move, uh, to prevent it from moving. And the fact is that once this pipeline uh, began began its operation cycles, every cycle it moved further away on the X direction. And this is demonstrate here, I'm going to show you a graph of the displacements of this red point here, that is exactly on the area where the pipeline uh, had the contact with its neighbor. And as you can see on the first cycle here, the pipeline moved to a position and once temper temperature was removed, the pipeline did not go back to its resting original position. And then on the next cycle, it moved further away from its original position. And then when the temperature was removed, it, had, it, it was farther away from its previous, previous position. And this went on until it, it reached uh, a stable position, which, which was pretty much about 150 millimeters away from its original position, which led this pipeline to, to contact, to have a contact uh, against its neighbor. Uh, this same pipeline, now I'm gonna have to open PCS again. This same pipeline ha uh, had uh, some creep, problems also and we have model a huge chunk of the pipeline that I'm going to show you now and on the on this chunk of pipeline we included uh, a creep model that uh, that displayed pretty good agreement with what we've seen in the field. This is a very large model, about 1.5 million degrees of freedom, uh, very large for us. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna to change to assembly view just to make it a little clearer. Okay. As you can see here, this would be pretty much impossible to, 
to model using only Abacus features, PCS models all the T's properly with mesh refinement. We have valves, we have spring hangers and spring cans. Okay, so this is a large model and this is what PCS was created to do. Very complex systems, systems with very complex loading conditions. Um, I'll give you now my contact information. If you have any further questions after, after this meeting is over, please contact me or contact Leonardo at Vias. We will be very happy to answer anything that, any information that you might need. This is me, I'm Carlos Eduardo. This is my email or you can contact us by phone. We are located in Brazil. And this is pretty much what I have for today. Okay, yeah, th thank you, Carlos. It was a very good presentation and uh, where you, you guys can see the good capabilities that PCS has. So it, that it can handle this complex piping uh, geometry. And so, yeah, you can contact us if you, you want to give it a try. I um, mean, you can contact uh, Carlos uh, so uh, he can tell you maybe like a trial version or something like you. And uh, if you guys have any question, you can type it on the chat. Uh, so and we will be here for another 10 minutes. So we can just, uh, you guys have any question, you can type it. Well, I guess I probably take this this time that we still have and show you a little bit about the reporting options of that we have here. What do you think, Leonardo? Uh, yes, we, we can do that. And just for let everyone know, so we will be uh, uh, sending the recording of this presentation. So uh, you want to review it and you want to take a look at it again. So we will send that to you. So you can review it as well. Okay. We have here, for instance, we have input reports. You can show a full report here where you can print it and pretty much check your work on a human readable fashion. And you can see what kind of mesh each pipe section has, supports, if you have included any stiffness. All the information that you have passed PCS will be displayed on this report. And you have several other options of report here. Okay, for instance, you can select pipe properties here and you can check each pipe section for each, each segment that you have created. And you do have also uh, output reports uh, along with this in order to make it easy for, for to generate your calculation reports and to store your data. Okay. Yeah, so we will send the, someone who was asking for the recording of the video. So yeah, we will send the recording of the, of the webinar. Uh, someone has a question about uh, Carlos about so how does the pipe support is handling in PCS? Ex 
excuse me, could you say that again? So how does the pipe support is handled in, in PCS? Well, the pipe supports are handled uh, using uh, abacus connector elements. We use stop conditions and friction. This is pretty much the standard connector from abacus and we can include elasticity in order to model the stiffness of the support. Uh, so this is this is requires, if a user is going to do this by manually, it's going to probably require him to access about 10, 10 dialog boxes and input several data. And we do this with only one dialog box. And he can do this for several pipe supports at once. Okay. okay, thank you. So you have any comment as well? So, I mean, there doesn't have to be a question. So, or you have any need on any particular uh, for piping systems or plant engineering, so yes, you can put a question or, or comment there. So anyone has any other question? So I guess it's uh, already three minutes past of the uh, 2.45 central time. So I guess we can close uh, our webinar for today. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining today and thank you Carlos for the presentation. Thank uh, you. It was very good presentation. So I will, uh, as I mentioned, I will send the recording for the webinar. And uh, if you guys have any uh, need or any uh, you want to some questions about the software or uh, what consultancy service we can provide it to you so you can email us or you can contact us or you can contact carlos as well so and uh, so again thank you everyone for joining today so have a good day thank you